wrapping up the stream now. Tight ends, higher, lower, Hail Marys. Hunter Henry, my tight end eight, that's plus three, the ECR. He's only 42% rostered. I don't know how he's not on every single team, given how abysmal tight end is in fantasy. He right now is the number one tight end fantasy, Hunter Henry. He's the yardage leader in the NFL at tight end. Now, he only has 56 yards. That just goes to show you more reflective of how bad this position is than how good Hunter Henry is, but he is damn good, too. I'm a Pats fan. Some of those catches he made, like a fourth downer, one-handed snag, multiple contested grabs, six targets, five catches, 56 yards, and that score. You got the Mac Jones narrative with them being roommates. Talk about best friends with A.J. Brown and Jalen Hurts and Stephon. Yeah, there's so many of those narratives. What about the roommate narrative? I love it. Better even than the Breakfast Club of Cooper Cup and Matthew Stafford. So I really like Hunter Henry moving forward. He definitely looks like the number one tight end option here. All the camp reports seeming to come to fruition that Kendrick Bourne and Hunter Henry were the surprising target leaders all camp. That's exactly what we saw in week one. Let's see it continue against a Miami team that just gave up the fourth most points to tight ends. That should be a shootout style game. And then we got Dalton Kincaid, another guy I'm a little bit higher on. Four spots above the ECR when I rank him at my tight end 10 against the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, he didn't have a huge game, four catches, 26 yards, but it's more the underlying usage that suggests a breakout will be here sooner than later. He played 47 snaps at wide receiver Dalton Kincaid, only eight in line, running 76% of the routes. He didn't see a ton of targets, 10%, matched by Dawson Knox. Those two kind of nibbled at each other's cheese all day, and that's going to be a little bit of an annoyance throughout the season, I imagine. But ultimately, I like Kincaid as more of that slot receiver, the guy moving all over the formation. Raiders were a top 12 matchup against the tight end, so good spot for your guy this week. I could see him definitely continuing to carve himself out a much bigger role in Dalton Kincaid this week. Lower, as usual, Kyle Pitts. Welcome back to the list. My tight end 17 against Green Bay, minus 8 ECR. He was a tight end 17 in week one. And barely got there. One late deep bomb to him. And it was frightening snap share and usage yet again for him. Almost 60% or so of the snaps. More of the routes. That, that was good to see when they were throwing. They actually went to him. But as we just reminded you, only 18 throws this last week. So very concerning overall pie. Very concerning that Kyle Pitts still can't earn himself an every down roll here. Very concerning that the tight end 22 kicks off his 2023 with a tight end 17 type of performance, just barely getting to that tight end 17 as well. So I, again, as I've always been with Kyle Pitts, I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when he has the quarterback play and the play caller that's actually going to use him. That's not here in Atlanta, at least not this year. So I'm not in. I'm also lower on Gerald Everett. He's ranked right now as a you know, top 14-ish guy, a fringe starter for many. He only ran 55% of the routes. Donald Parham was right behind him with 40%. And actually saw just as many targets at 10%. And Donald Parham saw the more valuable stuff. 50% of the end zone targets compared to 0% for Gerald Everett. His average depth of, par to, uh, of target for Parham, 5.67. Everett, 3. Just gross overall usage. Four PPR points outside your top 20 guys. Gerald Everett, not a guy. A lot of people consider him a popular streamer. Not for me. In fact, I might even rather have Donald Parham in my lineup given that type of usage. So maybe Parham's a Hail Mary. I don't think you have to go that far, though, because Luke Musgrave out there in all but 19% of leagues right now. He caught three passes for 50 yards. You got Christian Watson still banged up. I think you can absolutely fire up Luke Musgrave if you're desperate for a tight end. He ran 80% of the routes. That's elite for a tight end, especially a rookie tight end. And his average depth of target, 18 yards, leading the position so far with that matching everything we saw in training camp where he's streaking down the field, bringing a vertical element this offense doesn't have. 75% of those targets were also deemed catchable despite them being so deep down the field. And if he hadn't tripped over himself, he would have definitely scored and been one of those guys everyone's hammering into laps. He had eight PPR points with a tight end, 13 on that. And had he scored on that long bomb broken play touchdown, he would have probably been the tight end four of the week. I guess an Atlanta team, that's not a scary secondary. I am in love with Luke Musgrave. And if you're even more desperate, Logan Thomas, 3% rostered, the tight end 11 in week one. It was supposed to be a mix between Logan Thomas and Cole Turner, and Thomas just dominated. 78% of the routes, a whopping 25% target share, seven yards average at the target, not horrible for the guy. And he racked up you know, decent stats, four catches, 43 yards, a tight end. 
he'll take that in the year of 2023. Now, he did have two to three drops on those missed connections there. He is still 32 years old. Didn't look all that impressive, but the usage was there. And at tight end, it's rare to find an eight-target guy, certainly at 3% rostered right now. So I think Logan Thomas definitely warrants some streaming consideration. We'll back. That wraps up my higher, lower Hail Mary. That wraps up all the content I had planned for our week two preview. What is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments. Check out some more videos and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below.